In this corner, Joseph Martin, the Atomic Skull. And in this corner, an all-new repaint of Action Comics 1000 Superman. Sure, they come in the same box, but the package calls it a versus, so why not me? Place your bets and stick around to find out which figure is the best of the set, and why you might want to really consider picking this two-pack up. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures, and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Starting with the packaging, and it's a windowless box. I guess since it's an online exclusive, they figured it didn't matter if it had a window. So instead, we have a ginormous DC Multiverse logo. Down here, it says Atomic Skull versus Superman. Not just Atomic Skull versus Superman, but Action Comics Atomic Skull versus Superman. Nothing but logos on the other side. Logo up top, legal and barcode on the bottom. And then on the back, we get a picture of Purple Ghost Rider on one side, and the same artwork that they used for Action Comics 1000 on the other. I get that this is a repaint of Action Comics 1000, but they couldn't judge it up at least a little bit? And as long as we're talking about what's on the inside, they do have a plastic tray and the usual backer card, so I really don't get the point of making it windowless. Since his half of the box is at least new artwork for packaging, this round goes to Atomic Skull. Moving on to presentation, and Superman stands at seven and a quarter inches, whereas Atomic Skull stands at seven and a half, with the fire bringing him to eight inches. I put the word stands in air quotes because this figure is very difficult to keep on his feet. The problem are these ankle balls. Not only are these particular ankle balls mismatched and ugly and out of date, but the detents are particularly tight and have him leaning either too far forward or too far back. At least when he's leaning too far forward, the weight of his cape balances him, and it's baffling because that wasn't a problem I had with the first release of this figure. This one matches the new Hush release, but with some actual color in his skin. As a Superman purist, I also really appreciate the brighter blue of the costume, Though admittedly, I do prefer the richer reds of the original, especially next to other red characters like the Flash. Even so, if they were going to re-release Action Comics 1000 instead of giving us a new skull, this is a welcome upgrade. Not as welcome as double-jointed elbows, flesh-colored wrist balls, and thicker legs, mind you, but still welcome. As sculpt to detail goes, Atomic Skull has a lot more new parts, but is also a lot of reuse as well, specifically Battlesuit Lex Luthor. To Atomic Skull's credit, the upper torso is new, the forearms and hands are new, the diaper is new, and the knee pads, calves, and feet are new. Nice looking arc reactors you've got there. Be a real shame if somebody sued you over it. What? What are you looking at? And why is it suddenly so dark in here? When I first saw the promotional image of Atomic Skull, I thought that they reused the head of Deathstorm, but they did create a unique head and I think it looked great. There's some really solid sculpted and painted detail, and I love this transparent plastic they used for the fire. Honestly, I really just like this metallic lavender and purple overall. Whether you're familiar with the Atomic Skull or not, this is just a really nice looking figure. If, however, you're a big fan of Atomic Skull, you might have an issue with this. Mainly because of Aside from the fact that he wears a lilac Iron Man suit, there's almost no resemblance whatsoever to how he looks in the comic. Now, in McFarlane's defense, he's had a lot of different looks in the comic, but near as I can tell, nothing quite like this. On the other hand, because he's had so many different looks in the comic, you could just chalk this up to being another one. But if you're a die-hard Atomic Skull fan, I could see you being a bit let down. In a situation like this, where both figures have a lot of reuse, the question you have to ask is which one uses that reuse better. I love Action Comics 1000 Superman, but aside from a new lighter color scheme, there's nothing new going for him. Atomic Skull has a lot of Lex Luthor, but also a lot of new parts and a very fun color palette that really makes him pop. On the other hand, aside from the Atomic Skull, he doesn't really look like the Atomic Skull. Even the picture of him on the box that they used goes out of its way to hide his costume so you don't realize just how inaccurate it is. I'd be a liar though if I said that, just based on its own merit as a toy, that it wasn't really cool. For presentation, this round goes goes to Atomic Skull. Moving on to posability, and these are both bodies we've seen before. Very recently, in the case of my Superman Versus. Both figures' heads are on dumbbell joints. They can look up this far, with Superman hindered by his hair and Atomic Skull limited by his neck armor. That said, neither one has any trouble looking down. They can also tilt and turn all the way around. In terms of arm raising, Superman has the edge because of Atomic Skull's shoulder armor, but both figures have rotator cuffs and bicep swivel. Atomic Skull, however, benefits 
hits from double jointed elbows, whereas Action Comics Superman only has single jointed that can barely cut 90 degrees. Both have McFarlane style wrist balls, with Superman's being a lot more outdated and obvious. Moving to the middle and both figures have a diaphragm joint and a dumbbell waist, thanks to the armor and the joints on Atomic Skull are much better hidden. They can arch back this far with both figures being fairly equivalent, and they can hunch forward this far which is also equivalent and also not that impressive. At the very least though, both figures can tilt and twist. Below the waist, and both figures have McFarlane style hips. Alas, Superman doesn't get much of a super kick, but Atomic Skull can kick 90 degrees. Both have a pretty good split, very, very little twist. Atomic Skull has quite a bit. Moving down, and both Superman and Atomic Skull have double jointed knees, toe articulation, and McFarlane ankles that can swivel, hinge, and pivot. As much as I love Action Comics 1000 Superman and think it's one of the best Superman figures ever made, even I have to admit it is a little bit out of date now. Most especially as it pertains to the elbows, wrists, and ankles. For poseability, this round goes to Atomic Skull. Moving on to playability, and of course both figures come with trading cards. As you can see, it's the same artwork used for Action Comics 1000. Flipping it on its side, we can also see just how much thicker and more durable the cards used to be. And then flipping it around, we can see just how much more thorough they used to be. Not gonna lie, I really miss all these stats. If, like me, you're not all that familiar with Atomic Skull, well, here you go. And of course they come with figure stands, but they also come with this really cool atomic fire stand. It's actually reuse of the effect from Batman the White Knight, this time cast in purple. It also disassembles if you want to use them as two separate pieces for your dioramas. While these might not be the figures that were designed for this base, I do think that the effect is pretty cool. Regarding Atomic Skull, it's time for me to come clean. Throughout the video, I've been showing him with these regular normal hands, but these are actually the extras he came packed with. The ones he came preloaded with are these really cool energy effect hands. This is an awesome addition and something I hope McFarlane does more often. As for Superman, he came preloaded with a gun holding hand and a fist. He does, however, also have a pair of flight hands. But playability is more than just fire effects and trigger fingers. It's also about how well your figures play with others. Focusing first on Superman, and specifically the Justice League, and here we have Rebirth and three Jokers versions of Batman, as well as Nightfall and the humongous Hush. Next up, and here are Rebirth and Flashpoint versions of the Flash, NECA, and McFarlane versions of Green Lantern, and then Endless Winter Aquaman, and since it's the closest thing we have to a Rebirth comic version, Shazam! Fury of the Gods Wonder Woman. I thought I'd bring out Blue Beetle and Booster Gold to once again implore McFarlane toys to please make a Hal Jordan and Superman on these bodies, Switching for a moment over to Atomic Skull, and here he is with the two Battlesuit Lex Luthers. And since at one point he did go good and team up with the Teen Titans, I thought I'd bring out some of them. Here we have Raven, Kid Flash, Wonder Girl, Arsenal, and Tim Drake Robin finally finding another figure he actually scales with. And then with Superman and Atomic Skull together, here we have some more Superman villains. This one, of course, is General Zod. Here's the Rebirth version of Bizarro, really hoping for a classic version soon. And then here we have Superboy Prime. Prime. Superboy Prime brings us to the rest of the Super Family. Here's Connell Superboy and John Kent Superman. For Kal-El's cousin Kara, and here we have Injustice 2, the Flash movie version, and DC Essentials. I have pre-ordered the Target one, but I haven't gotten her yet. DC Essentials Supergirl brings us to DC Essentials Superman and to a whole collection of other Clarks that Atomic Skull can play with. Next is the NECA version, the DC Direct John Byrne version, the original Action Comics 1000, the very swole DC Rebirth, the blue and red Henry Cavill variant, The Dark Knight Returns, the fan-favorite Page Punchers, and the all-new Hush with his very inconvenient cape matching Superman's colors. Speaking of colors, for those of you out there with an eye for customization who might want to turn this into a Christopher Reeve Superman, here you go. For a couple of large-scale comparisons though, and here's Superman with Mongol and Doomsday, but for a relative-scale comparison, here's Superman and Atomic Skull with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man, and as always, here they are with Stealth Iron Man, who for whatever reason is really lurking in the shadows. It's called being stealth. Atomic Skull's fiery base is so versatile, and the main reason I'm really happy this was a two-pack in instead of a single release. This figure is fantastic for your Justice League or Superman family displays, but between the accessories and the lack of other options for this character, for playability, this round goes to Atomic Skull. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price, and this is the part you really need to pay attention to. This two-pack is an Amazon exclusive that retails for $39.99. It's a great way of getting a new Superman villain on the shelf, but it's an even better way of getting this 
this Superman. It regularly goes anywhere from $60 to $80 on the aftermarket. By contrast, this one is only $40 and comes in a much brighter palette that many more closely associate with the character. If you prefer your Superman to be a bit beefier, the Hush version is also available. But if Action Comics is the Superman for you and you missed out on the original, this figure is essential. For price, this round goes to Superman, but the battle goes to Atomic Skull 4 to 1. Do you prefer your Superman to be bulkier or leaner? Sound off in the comments below, and while you're down there, tell me which Superman villain you hope that they make next. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching, I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.